Good morning and welcome to our service at St Leonard's and St Peter's. It's great to have you with us. Uh, it's great to have you with us if uh, you're used to meeting with us or if you're just uh, checking us out online. You're all more than welcome. You know, it's a great opportunity to join in together to reflect on all that's happening and to allow God into our lives and our situation. There's going to be songs that we'll be enjoying. Uh, you won't maybe know all the songs, but I just pray that there'll be great opportunities to sit and reflect on glorious truths that we celebrate in church, particularly in this season of Easter. One thing that's happening after the service uh, that you might want to think about uh, now, uh, we're going to uh, meet on Zoom. Now, home groups have been doing this and do keep going with that, guys, but I just realised that some of you uh, might not be in a home group and might appreciate just having a, a coffee and a chat after the service. Obviously, if you're listening to this a little bit later, that's not going to work. Um, but uh, perhaps we could hook up in a, a different way. Before we have our opening song, let's remember and pause for a moment that though we are physically separated, God is here. He's with us in this moment and this space. And nothing can separate us from the love of God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that you are with us in this moment by your Spirit, that we might meet and encounter the risen Lord Jesus, your Son, afresh. We set aside this time to fix our minds and our hearts on you. We pray you'd encourage us through your word, that you'd encourage us through one another. We pray that our eyes would be raised to you from our daily routine, to behold your glory and to know your love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. It's great to have you for our worship this morning. We're going to have this one that the whole family can get involved in, and it's got some action. So if you're lacking a little bit of exercise, do get involved. Carmen's going to give you the actions that follow her as we worship our great big God. One thing across this nation that many churches have been doing is uh, supporting and particularly praying for our key workers 
in the communities in which we live and further afield. And of course, this week, the schools have gone back and uh, in some ways, the teachers have never stopped working over the Easter break, uh, but most of the children have gone back uh, on Monday. And uh, it's great to be able to have an interview with one of our key workers in the education sector. And we have Claire Page, who is uh, the Chair of Governors at our own St Peter's School in Cassington, um, interviewing the head of that school, John Jeffries. Morning. Well, uh, in this weekly series that we have introducing key workers from our community, uh, it's my pleasure this morning to introduce to you uh, John Jeffries, who's the head teacher at St Peter's Cassington. Uh, welcome, John. Hi, good morning. Yeah, very welcome. Um, now, some people will know you very well, um, either because they go to St Peter's or because they work at St Peter's or because perhaps they're a governor like me or maybe just because you're part of the community and they are too. But for those who don't know you, um, could you perhaps just introduce yourself briefly and tell us a little bit about St Peter's School? Sure, so this is my second year uh, at St Peter's. Um, really enjoying my time here so far. It's fantastic to work with such a brilliant community. Um, the kids are wonderful, the parents are great. Um, wonderful governors as well, of course. Oh yes. Um, <laughs> So it's just really great to be here um, and working uh, with the school. Um, so I live locally. I, I come from Woodstock, um, and before Cassington, I was the deputy head teacher um, at Freeland, um, which is again is part of the, the EPA, our academy, um, and which is a really good place to be for us. Yes, the Ancient Partnership Academy includes seven schools, doesn't it? Um, Bartholomew is the secondary school in the group, and then there's six uh, primary schools locally. Uh, yeah, so uh, tell us about St Peter's School. How big is it? So we've got just about 100 children on roll. Uh, we've got nursery children um, here as well. Uh, so the classes are split up um, as such. So we've got year one and two together, three and four together, and five and six together. Um, for a small village school, that works really well for us um, to have those mixed, mixed year groups. So uh, teachers get the, the children um, for two years, so then it gets them really well. Um, you know, for, for, for personal reasons and for really pushing on their learning. Mm, brilliant. And this is the beginning of a new term, isn't it? But it's rather different uh, the way uh, you're having to start this term. Can you describe to us um, how school is at the moment, really, how things are working and what's like a typical day like? Well, believe it or not, we're trying to keep things as normal as we can. So we're keeping to the curriculum. Uh, we're trying to teach the lessons um, as much as we normally would. Um, so we're managing to do that through Google Classroom, uh, so the teachers get to see uh, the children in the mornings, uh, called the Google Meet, uh, where the children can ask any questions about the day's learning or any problems from uh, the previous day. Uh, parents have been getting really involved with that as well and asking the teachers questions, so we feel we're really set for the day. Uh, and then the, the teachers are providing videos of themselves, maybe modelling new math strategies, etc. Um, so the children really know uh, what their learning um, looks like for the day. Um, so most of it is, is based on, on the laptops, um, so they'll be able to submit their answers, teachers can mark the work as normal, give feedback, um, so we've set up, we're really confident in the system we've set up um, to provide the best learning that we can for the children. I think it's amazing what you're doing and you're definitely the man for the job uh, at this time, brilliant. Um, so it's a bit of a mixed blessing obviously, um, you know, there are some benefits that some of us are finding in working this way, but have you got any good news stories that have come out of the way that you're working at the moment? Um, I think firstly the way that the teachers have responded to this, it's really brought us um, even closer together, we're a tight team anyway, um, but just hats off to the teachers. Um, what we're doing, you know, it could take a, a year's project to say right we're going to introduce Google Classrooms, the teachers taught themselves how to do it in one afternoon, uh, spent two days teaching the children, um, then the ten school days before Easter, um, was basically, you know, kind of suck it and see and, and, and seeing what approaches worked, what didn't work, feedback from parents, feedback from children. And so we got to a, a fairly good um, system by the end, of, uh, before Easter. And now coming back this week, we're refining the, the approaches even more. So, so first of all, good news is, you know, the teachers just put in so much effort. Um, the parents are, are really responding. They, they can appreciate how much effort's going in. Likewise, we appreciate, you know, what situations the parents have got at home. Um, the different ways that they're trying to engage with us. And again, hats off to the children as well. Um, we talk a lot about in school, 
about lessons for life, uh, which got our four R's, uh, which is resilience, resourcefulness, reciprocity. Um, I always forget the other one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, reflection uh, is the other one. So we, we tried to think at the end of their time at St. Peter's, what lessons for life have they got? How can they go out into the world and be the best that they can be? Um, and so this is really testing um, our values and, and those four R's. Um, and it's really pleasing to see how, how the children uh, are adapting um, and, and just really going for it. Um, so, so lots of good news that it's, the whole community just seems to be so positive. Excellent. Well, yeah, you talked about resilience there. So what are the challenges for the children and the staff? So especially for the younger ones, um, just learning how to use the Google Classrooms um, on the laptops at home. Um, we've had issues, you know, some parents may, may have several children, maybe one laptop to share between them. Um, so we've, we've had to, to lend some Google Chromebooks um, to parents, um, which has been great. So again, it comes down to that communication. Um, so it, it's just been, a, you know, a whole, a whole community effort um, in being able to, to get this, get this organised and, and be able to, to do it well. Um, so the children, especially the young ones, like I say, they've, they've done a really good job of learning how to do that, supported by parents. The older ones, they found it a lot easier, of course. Um, so it's kind of down to their, their own personal independence of, of how well they can do those challenges now. So in the light of all that um, and the challenges that you've described there or anything else, really, how can the churches um, be best praying for the school in this time? Um, I've, I've been thinking about this with, with, with Duncan, especially how we can tighten the links between um, the church and the school. Um, and I think what I'd like more, more than more than anything else is for maybe the church community. Just have a look at our blog on our uh, school website. Um, there's lots going on there. Duncan's been doing uh, collective worship for us there. Um, so it's great to see him there. Uh, Jenny Carter, one of our teachers, she's been doing different prayer activities. Um, so I think what I'd like more than anything is maybe the church community, just have a look at our, our blog. Um, maybe have a look at some of our prayer activities. I know Mrs. Carter was doing one uh, about the hand, um, decorating a hand with different prayers for different people. So maybe if anybody out there um, could just have a go at one of those, post it to our office email address that you'll find on the website, and it'd be really, really great if we could get some community involvement um, into our blog as well. Um, so perhaps doing some prayers that way, that would be amazing. Brilliant. Brilliant. That's a great suggestion. Um, and thank you so much. Um, that's really helpful because that will help people to keep remembering St. Peter's by going to the website and looking at the blog, by praying for, uh, for you and the staff and the school. Um, and uh, it's just been great to get to know you a bit more today. Uh, and we wish you really well in the coming term. Just like to finish with um, a prayer that went on the school website uh, that I shared just before Easter. Uh, so this will help you too. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for our school as a place to learn about this amazing world. For our friends, the things and people we love, and all the people who love us. Thank you for the message of the Easter story, which shows us that your goodness and power are greater than anything else in the world, and that we can at all times turn to you for courage and strength. We pray for your peace and protection over all who need you at this time and for ourselves, that whether we're at school or at home, you'll give us minds that learn, hearts that love, and faith that gives. Amen. Many of us have been listening to our recording of John's Gospel. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Lighting a candle can help us to focus on the light which Jesus brings into our world as we come to prayer. Our lives have changed significantly in recent weeks as we find ourselves in the midst of a global pandemic. Countries around the world are in lockdown as we seek to halt the spread of COVID-19. And we pray for a time when we are safe to live together in community again. Heavenly Father, we pray for knowledge and wisdom for all those in authority, our Prime Minister and his government, as well as international cooperation and leadership as they make difficult decisions finding the way forward. 
lockdown is more challenging for those in poorer communities and in developing countries where running water and sanitation is limited and smaller homes house large multi-generation families. We pray for those living in difficult circumstances. As trials begin locally in Oxford seeking an effective vaccine, we give thanks that they have sufficient volunteers to test and we pray for the work of scientists searching for beneficial treatments. Give strength and healing to the sick. Comfort those who are dying. And may those who are grieving know your love and peace. We seek your comforting presence with those feeling isolated and lonely and help for those who are struggling. We pray for stamina and good health for those providing treatment and care for the frail and the sick, whether at home, in our hospitals or care homes. We especially remember Beach Court and Church Fields. We pray for everyone working in education at this time. Those keeping our schools open for key workers' children. Teachers seeking innovative ways to learn. And parents at home encouraging their children. We give thanks for all the valuable care and support offered in our local community in so many ways and we seek protection for all volunteers, those working to keep our shops open and services running, our bus drivers and postmen. Amen. Shall we end by saying the Lord's Prayer together? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, you will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
that song may have been new to some of you but I do pray that you were able to use that space just to look to God afresh the one that we can trust whatever situations we're going through now uh, we've been looking at the Easter narrative seen these services uh, particularly the Easter narrative as recorded by uh, the Apostle John who was a disciple of Jesus an eyewitness to all that was going on at the time Carmen's going to read a poem that is based on uh, the text that we're going to be looking about, uh, looking at in a, in a moment and reflecting upon. Uh, so it might be useful, actually, if you've got a Bible nearby, to turn uh, to the original as we reflect on it together. Uh, John chapter 20, uh, verse 19 to 31. And I've also got a link uh, in uh, just below the video if you want to read that uh, online. And after Carmen has read, uh, we're going to be in my normal habit now, out of my exercise, um, reflecting uh, on that passage together. Imagine that someone who died just appeared. Someone you loved. Would it feel good or would it feel weird? So when Jesus appeared in a room that was locked, his disciples were startled and frightened and shocked. It's his, his ghost. ghost! They all whispered, and every knee knocked, sighing, goodbyeing, and crying. There's no need to fear, Jesus said with a smile. It's me, I'm back, at least for a while. Touch my hands and my feet. You can't touch a ghost. A ghost never eats but I'd like a fish roast. My new body will last forever and ever. No boast, no sighing, goodbye or crying. But Thomas was missing and didn't believe that Jesus had been. He still wanted to grieve. Unless I see for myself, Thomas said, his hands, his side and the places he bled I won't be convinced that he rose from the dead. I'll be sighing, goodbyeing, and crying. So Jesus returned to his friends the next week. Thomas, he said, here's the proof that you seek. 
touch the holes in my hands and the wound in my side. See and believe your friends did not lie. My Lord and my God, Thomas said, you're alive and stop sighing, goodbye and crying. My Lord and my God. Extraordinary words from Thomas. Of course, Thomas is known for his doubting, and we'll get to that in a moment, but firstly, these are the most extraordinary and bold confession of faith that we have in John's Gospel. And as John recounts them, he brings his story of the life of Jesus to a natural conclusion. We've come full circle. Because he began with those uh, ground-shaking words right back at the beginning of his gospel. Uh, words that we hear in carol services every year. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And now Thomas is the first to articulate this new understanding. Not only was Jesus the Messiah that they were all looking for, he was God himself walking amongst them. If you have seen me, you have seen the Father, Jesus had said. And now Thomas gets it. And then John turns the camera around, as it were, and says, what about ye? Though you can't see Jesus physically, do you see? Do you get it? But we can be comforted because it didn't come to Thomas straight away. So we come to the doubting bit, something we're probably all familiar with. See, he hadn't been with the others on Easter Sunday, and it was a week and a day later. He'd heard these claims that Jesus had uh, been amongst them and had appeared to the, his, his friends, but it was too extraordinary, too unexpected to believe. So he's a gift to us really, Thomas is. And these few sentences, they are for us. We who struggle to believe, we who wrestle to make sense of all this. You know, we might be tempted to think that Jesus, in a sense, kind of lives on in the, the minds and the lives of those who follow him. Or perhaps it's all about metaphors. I mean, resurrection metaphors are everywhere. I mean, we're living in one at the moment as spring unfolds before us. So maybe something special happened, but the stuff of normal reality that we increasingly know more and more about. But Thomas is a gift to us because clearly that is not enough for him. He's not interested in clever philosophy or uh, intelligent psychology. He's interested in the real flesh and bone standing up in front of him reality. Unless I see, unless I touch, unless I place my hand, I will not believe. Nothing less would do. Nothing less, nothing less would mean much either. Not really, because Thomas knew this thing. Death is real. A real event. A real enemy. A real tragedy. Dead people don't get up again. Not properly dead people, like Jesus clearly was. And we know the same, don't we? More so perhaps in these days than we have for a long time. Because lockdown is limiting, we know, and it's, uh, it's, it's a struggle. It's sometimes damagingly limiting as businesses struggle as careers are lost and people begin to find the pinch financially. But we know that most of us 
will come out the other side. But death, well, that's why we're on lockdown. There's no coming out the other side. And most of us are having to face that as we lose loved ones in our family or at least in our community, and we grieve. We long for a good news ending. Media, films, love a good ending. But Thomas doesn't need a degree from Oxford to tell him that good endings don't happen when it comes to death. That is until Jesus entered a locked room with his disciples. And Thomas is with him this time. He's with the group. And he encounters the risen Jesus and discovers that though death is real, Jesus is realer. Now I know I've got the grammar wrong, but it's wonderful, isn't it? Thomas, Thomas's disbelief withers away at the sight of the risen Jesus. This present, this pulsatingly alive, concrete Jesus. Despite the reality of death, there is one who has come through the other side. And comes out the other side much more real. I wonder whether that's why locked doors are no problem for Jesus. Here is a body that is similar but different and and so much more substantial that it can pass through the stuff of this age around us. In the same way that we can pass through water because we are more substantial than water. I, I don't know. But the other thing about this locked door is that it gives me an assurance that these accounts are authentic. If I wanted you to believe that my latest wacky idea, I'm not going to include some unexplained mystery, bizarre mystery, like a locked door that Jesus passes through. No, their, their language and their, their description of what's going on is, is it's difficult. They're struggling, they're wrestling with words to depict, to describe this Jesus standing in front of them. And he was standing in front of them. And Thomas falls on his knees and says, my Lord and my God. And I've written this account, says John, so that though you can't see the body of the risen Jesus, not yet anyway, I've written these words so that you might believe. And not believe in sense of you know, notching this fact into one corner of your worldview, but know that you would have life in Jesus, life in his name. You know, what I need most today is for Jesus to enter into my lockdown, to open my eyes, take my hand, to show me what life really is all about. You take my assumptions and my preconceptions and my presumptions and my successes, my failures, my mistakes and just gently tell me this is how it really is. Former Archbishop puts it this way when he says, the disciples had become convinced that being in the company of Jesus is the way to become fully and effectively human. So we all have a choice, a choice to be in the company of this life giver. You know, we start the Christian life with that choice and we continue with that choice every time we awake as we journey through our Christian life. And no, we're not in the position of Thomas to reach out and touch Jesus physically not yet. But Jesus is really present with us through the Holy Spirit. As we meet together with other Christians, even if it's virtually online. As we share bread and wine. 
even in the quietness of our own hearts. And he gives us strength in our waiting. And yes, in our lockdown. Strength to keep going, to keep exploring, to keep questioning, to keep finding him, to keep sharing, to keep giving, to keep on the learning to love. And then one day, we will find ourselves in a room with the risen Jesus. And in the words of ancient scripture, we will be able to say, I see him for myself. With my own eyes, I see him. And then it will be time for us to walk through some locked doors. I wonder how you need to respond to that passage from scripture today. I hope you can take some time at some point and just reflect what God might be saying to you. How might you respond? What is he trying to teach you in these challenging days? And if you want to get in touch to ask any questions or take conversation a bit further, um, I'm really happy uh, just uh, you see my email in the, uh, the, sh the notes at the bottom of the video. Do get in touch. One way the church has responded uh, through the centuries to God's word is to declare their trust. I believe, even though we have not seen with our eyes, we trust in these eyewitness accounts and in the living Lord Jesus. And we're going to... Uh, join together in perhaps one of the oldest kind of creed-like passages um, in scripture, probably written only a few years after the resurrection. And Paul takes what was already existing in the church and puts it in his, one of his letters that was written uh, just about 50 AD, about 20 years after Jesus' death and resurrection. So let us declare our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried, he was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received and this we believe. Amen. Now over this uh, period, uh, many of us have been meeting in groups, but of course socially distanced and in our own homes, uh, but using the platform Zoom. wonder how it's going for you. Uh, uh, and uh, I wanted to find out how some of our groups have been handling this. And so Paul has interviewed some members of the Year 11 cell group. Uh, I wonder how they're coping. We're going to find out now. Hi, I'm Paul and I help lead uh, the Year 11 cell group and Duncan asked me to find out what's been going on in some of the cell youth groups since we've been in lockdown. So I'm here with Hope, Archie and Naomi. Hi. In, their, in the Year 11 cell and I've got a few questions uh, for them. Uh, so how long has your cell been meeting on Zoom? Um, so we've been meeting, at, the f at first we were about 45 minutes in. Um, because it was sometimes cut off because like the free version of Zoom cuts you off at 45 minutes. But we've been meeting for a lot longer now. Um, and yeah, so we usually get in prayers, stuff like that. Um, a game we sometimes play at the start and we have a discussion in the middle. Um, and Naomi, what do you enjoy about uh, Cell on Zoom? Probably how normal it is, just because like, I think, Ollie and Dobby have worked really hard to try and not make it like a big thing about how like, you know, like we're all alone in this lockdown and actually like it's like a really nice thing to do together. Um, and it's, it still feels just like cell to me. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that doesn't work on, on Zoom when, when you do cell group? Um, probably like people's Wi-Fi connections sometimes that like, you can hear like half cutouts or something or when like, I'll, I'll say something, but I not realise that someone else has already started saying something. Mm -hmm. So, 
Last place is it. I, I miss Caroline's snacks because they are the best. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, indeed. <laughs> uh, Archie, has there been anything that has been a pleasant surprise about the cell Zoom experience? Yeah, so kind of going into it, it was it was all a bit like, oh, we're using an online platform, like there are going to be a lot of limitations, like we're going to be kind of limited with our time and people are going to have dodgy connections and we won't be able to play like physical games like miniature tanks and whatever um but actually we've so kind of yeah games is one thing that has been a really nice surprise so we've played things like bring me where you charge around the house um grabbing random stuff from who knows where and bringing it back uh, to your computer as quick as possible um and we've tried hangman and various different things so that's really nice but um yeah no there it's it's worked out really well and it's um it's been really successful so uh, yeah, very pleased. Brilliant. Do you think there's a future for Zelsoon beyond lockdown? Oh, I don't know. It doesn't quite beat kind of the face-to-face -face, um, proper authentic cell. But um, yeah, it's a, it's a good um, uh, close second. Great. Well, thank you very much for your time. Um, and uh, we'll sign off here. Thank you. I do hope all your Zoom meetings go smoothly and are helpful just to feel a little bit connected to one another at this time. Now there are a number of resources um, that I'd love to point you to and have supplied uh, below the video and in the notes as well of the YouTube video. Uh, firstly, just some articles that I found helpful uh, when considering, considering the evidence for the resurrection of Jesus. Also, Ollie and Stephen have a video this week called Talking Points just a couple of questions that hopefully all ages can engage with, just to discuss uh, particularly our doubts uh, this week over just perhaps over lunch together. And Carmen's got the prayer activity. Uh, many of us have loved engaging with that, uh, just to bring God into this situation. Also, a member of our church has done some thinking for many years and research about the importance of preparing ourselves practically for the reality of dying, for our own sake and for the sake of our loved ones. And again, I've put a letter, uh, put a, an, a link to the letter that she has sent, which also points to further resources to support uh, us thinking about this. You know, in the light of the resurrection, we need not fear about talking about dying with one another. And uh, don't forget to join us for a chat uh, over Zoom, uh, either in your home group or, uh, as I say, myself and Carmen. Uh, and also there'll be a prayer meeting tonight at 7pm over Zoom again. All the details are available. We're going to uh, finish with our final hymn, Heart of My Own Heart, Whatever Befall, Still Be My Vision, O Ruler of All.
peace of God our Father, the joy of the Holy Spirit and the hope of the resurrection through Jesus Christ our Lord as this week unfolds. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you all and those you love now and always. Amen. <laughs>